Uh, but when when they hit the place, they have moved. It's very close to the Gambian border, and uh, the Gambian authorities have expressed um, concern over the checkpoint that was here. So we'll have an opportunity to see. Um, you'll have a chance also to speak to the Alkali of Upert, who will tell you um, the, the refugee concern they had, and also some of the issues that are ongoing um, here, some of the problems that they will have, and also the, some of the patrols that have been conducted by own troops. As you can see, um, very evident that you know, it's not a, it's a very rocky road. Not easy, but we have been doing it under this terrible weather condition to ensure that people really enjoy their life to make sure that they don't run. Uh, we could have registered a higher refugee turnout. We could have registered a more IDPs, but because of the confidence building patrols and the assurance patrols conducted by our own troops, um, the people had the confidence to stay and not to move, and the economic losses earlier highlighted was reduced, simply because the people did not move to leave, abandon the areas. Their animals could have died in droves in high numbers, but because they stayed to give water to the animals and give feed to the animals, um, um, the animals were able to stay alive. So we'll give you the opportunity to speak to the Alkali, who will actually tell you um, some of those issues. Yeah. Who are? Hitting this area on the 7th of April. They started hitting this area on the 7th of April. So they have documented um, some of the issues and concerns they have. And I'm sure um, the government will, will, will provide the assistance. Because the, 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 the operation started along our area from Kanilai coming this way up to around um, where we last had an interview at, at, Gifang, um, at um, Gilamfari. That was the first time that they started operating. That was since that, um, 13th of April, um, March. In 13th of March, then they started um, documenting, taking their names. Then from there, the assistant would come. But it cannot be very automatic. This is why they are yet to receive the assistance. But I'm very sure that their names have been taken. It's from there that they'll be able to ascertain which kind of assistance they are going to have. Come again, Claire? start when? April? It's April 7th. That April was the 7th. time that is around this belt. The Senegalese started conducting um, offensive action around this belt. But it started around um, since 13th of March, around Kadilai, coming to um, Ilamfari. So it has been systematic coming this way, and now they are moving to the other belt. Yeah, thank you. But when the Senegalese started the incursion, they move. All right, so it just shows that the, um, the operation is uh, a bit successful. Yeah. Take what? Um, um, well, what we do as a country and as an armed force, our role and responsibility is to protect our territorial integrity. So we protected the border to ensure that um, no armed incursion takes place, either the MFDC separatists or either the Senegalese armed forces entering into our country, which we are able to control. And that has also reduced the number of internally displaced people moving further into, into, into the country. So this is um, the confidence building patrol was able to reinforce the people, re reassure them so that they did not move further. So that has reduced the, 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 the potential humanitarian situation in the country. What are some of the challenges that you encounter during your discussion? Uh, well, you can see the road is very bad. That's one of the things that um, really affected us. Um, but um, the people are very accommodative and they really accepted and appreciated um, what we actually did. And uh, of course, we were able to protect some of the animals who, who were at actually, if they were not giving them food or water, they could have gone astray, they would have gone left. But because of um, the patrols and the standing patrol that we conducted, you can see we are in the Kasu season. So because um, sometimes people were afraid um, to get into their farms to pick the Kasus, but we, we stand there for two, three hours to allow them to harvest and later they, they, they move, as you had uh, some of these community leaders, what they actually said. So the problems, of course, they they are, they, are, they are there, but at least very minimal. We've got enough support. You can see the new vehicles that have been given by the government to ensure that we, we, we conduct um, extensive patrols. And of course, they have resources. The funding is there. They have provided enough fuel. You can see from our fort operating base from Kanilai to here is very far. So daily or every um, weekly, we conduct three to four patrols um, all the way from Kanilai um, up to here to Kafuta, going down to Jiboro. So it's a long stretch 
but actually um, the, the operation is fully resourced and funded by the government of the Gambia. Now, the army also patrolling here in this area sometimes? Yes, of course. Um, the, yeah, they, they, are, they are in their, um, in their country and they are also patrolling. We, we, we normally hear information that um, the, the, the Senegalese patrol team have come up to the border and um, residents will call us. So it means they are also um, taking care of the, 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 the situation in their country. Had the separatives left when you came here or you still met with us in active uh, checkpoint? Yeah, three weeks ago they were very active. They were here. We even had an interaction with them, of course, to tell them that you have no business with um, coming into the Gambia with arms and ammunition. You can come as a normal citizen, which is allowed and is accepted, but you cannot come with arms and ammunition into our country, of which we had an agreement and we discussed. But now you can see they are not there, they have left the place. All right, thank you. All right, let's go. We have a long way to go. So um, this is another village, it's called Karunur, and uh, he's the alcali of the village. So he is also going to um, explain. Um, perhaps if you have questions, he's going to speak in Maniga. Um, then you can ask him uh, questions. This is where or sometimes also we conduct um, standing patrols to allow the people to go and harvest their, their kasu. Um, as you recall, uh, when the, um, the launching of the Senegalese military operation started, these are some of the villages that were affected. Uh, it's from Balen, um, then Karunur, um, you're going to Baipal and Gilamfari. These are the red zones. This was where some of the rebels were staying behind. Um, 100 meters from here, you are into Kasamas. So um, the people here endured a lot of um, suffering, but however, with the confidence building patrols conducted by the armed forces, it was able to restore confidence, and you can see um, life is still going on normal. People are doing their normal activities in the village. And uh, you know, the patrols were able to reduce the economic loss that was supposed to be registered by the region. Because um, the casus, as you can see, is their season. So without the villagers being able to harvest them at the right time, that would have been a serious waste. And when we conduct patrols also, um, by then there were no people in the village. So the animals uh, will be moving around because there is no one to provide water. But the soldiers will either pump and give water to the animals or they will make, stay here for an, uh, two, three hours to allow the people to come and give water to their animals. So the patrols were able to reduce the economic losses that's supposed to be registered by um, the region. So the alcali will, will say it from the horse's mouth um, what, what he know about um, this ongoing operation. Ua, Gambia. Um, this is Jilamfari. It has received a lot of um, artillery bombardment as part of the ongoing conflict. But about, about um, 10 meters, 15 meters from here, you are into Kasamas. And this, just this bushes that you are seeing is one of the rebel, that was before one of the rebel camps. Um, this is how close it was, and it's part of the areas that um, there were a lot of hidden. So this is a crater created by the, the cells of the artillery, the 155 um, artillery cell that dropped in this area. So, so this is part of the road. Yeah, it is a gun, um, it's an artillery gun, and it fires artillery cells. So the cells has a radius of about 300, and the fragmentation will be about 350 meters. The fragmentation will, will, will hit areas. So if we pick some of the artillery cells here, and, and ahead also. Yeah, so this is where we just intend to, to show you um, some of the, um, the cells where they landed. Yep. Yes, um, yeah, we, um, yeah, when, when we knew about it, um, the information was sent to our higher headquarters, and the higher headquarters also informed their counterparts. The CDS informed his counterpart about this, and of course, uh, in every uh, military operation, of course, three bullets will always move, and that the mechanism of the artillery sometimes also um, is difficult. Um, it might hit elsewhere because if it's just hot, and because of the wind direction and so on. So there are a lot of mechanisms involved. And, and according to the Chief of Defence Staff, when he spoke his counterpart, he said they have no intention to launch into Gambia. It is not a deliberate um, intent for them to do it. But of course, uh, looking at the mechanisms, sometimes it does occur. It's just like you throwing a stone. Sometimes you aim your stone going to this direction, the stone will hit a different direction. Meanwhile, you have the intent to hit um, a particular place. So in this case, it's also like that because it's not a direct weapon. Indirect. It's an indirect weapon. So an indirect weapon means um, it goes up and comes down. But a direct weapon is you just aim somewhere and perhaps sometimes it may hit. But an indirect weapon is, you know, you're about 
This one is about 300, um, is about 23 kilometers to 30 kilometers. So the person doesn't have an eye on where he's going to land. But he calculated within his map and what he has. This is why it occurs in that manner. Okay. For how long can it travel? <laughs> well, um, the delay will take about um, 30 seconds. About when you hit it and before it land, the travel time that it will travel and come and um, blow. So where you launch it, it doesn't make.